Hello, everyone. Um, thank you for this invitation. I'm a lecturer in biochemical engineering, both. <laughs> OK. So today, I will just give you a little taste of what I'm doing at the University of Bath. First of all, this slide summarizes my research. I work in three main areas. I'm interested in three main areas. One is water quality, the other one is clean energy, and then healthcare devices. And it's a very multidisciplinary research. It involves several uh, disciplines, such as biotechnology, bioelectrochemistry, nanotechnology, microfluidics. And at the core, there is a technology that is called biofuel cell. So today, I will, I will focus only on uh, water quality monitoring. OK, so which is our vision? So we aim to develop a device that um, a sensor that it's handy, that it's cost effective, and that can detect on site and in real time bioactive components in water in a very cost effective manner by using this technology I say, the biofuel cell. So, which is the context for this, or why this is important? Well, water systems are contaminated by a number of pollutants, traces of pollutants. We define them as macro pollutants because their concentration is very low. And mainly, um, water companies are concerned about pesticides. The slug killer is the main concern at the moment, and uh, pharmaceuticals. They're very difficult to detect because of their concentration and because of, um, uh, of they being um, defined as emerging pollutants. So at the moment, the way to detect uh, those contaminants in water is via uh, lab-based um, uh, methodologies. So we need to extract the sample and we need to use very expensive equipment. So this type of uh, analysis are offline, of course, and they cannot help us taking immediate actions, and they're also very um, expensive. So, um, the other thing is that it's not um, we don't understand yet the effect that these pollutants have on human health and on the aquatic bi uh, biota, and um, uh, not only the effect of single pollutants, but also the co-contamination effect. I don't know how to... Oh, okay. So, why it is important to develop something that allows real-time monitoring? So, first of all, because it can help us to map the distribution of a pollutant in a water system and help us also to assess at the same time the bioactivity of this component, so which effect this component has on the aquatic biota and on human health. Then having something that works in situ help us taking immediate action. So if there is a, um, an accidental spill, we know this immediately. And then water companies are also, are, also, are also interested in monitoring the efficacy of the wastewater treatment. And this is of particular relevance if we consider wastewater reuse, for example, for agriculture. Okay, so I said that um, we aim to, do it, to address these challenges by using this technology, the biofuel cell technology. Let's see, first of all, how it works. It's a biofuel cell, so it's an electrochemical device. So it uh, comprehends a nanot and a cathod. These are connected through an external circuit and are separated by a proton exchange membrane. And we call it biofuel cell because we implement bacteria as the catalyst. So those bacteria are uh, originated uh, from um, activated sludge, so we just inject activated sludge to the system, and they uh, will attach to uh, the anode and will form what we call an electroactive uh, biofilm. Okay, so we feed the anode with an organic matter, carbohydrates, fatty acids. These are digested, 
by the enzyme, uh, sorry, by, by the enzyme inside the bacteria, and as a result, electrons are formed, protons and CO2. Protons travel across the external circuit to the cathode, thus producing electricity. Protons flow across the proton exchange membrane. At the cathode, the electrons will combine with the protons and with an oxidant, and the easiest is oxygen, to form water. So with this device, we, pro we, we produce electricity out of any sort of organic matter. And we also have CO2, but this is not extra CO2 because this comes from the respiration of the bacteria, so it's part of a cycle, and uh, clean water. So why this technology is so attractive? Because, as I said, it produces electricity out of organic matter, and organic matter is present in wastewater. So biofuel cells are a, a technology that produces uh, electricity directly from wastewater. Wastewater coming from industries, coming from agriculture, from farms, and also domestic wastewater. So it's very uh, clean technology. It uses a renewable source, and that's, that's are the uh, most important feature of this technology. But now let's see how we can use it as a sensor to see how good um, our water is. Okay, so I said that this technology um, produces a way to produce electricity through the action of bacteria. So we can say that the electricity that biofuel cells produce are um, an expression of the metabolic activity of the bacteria. In other terms, in simple words, the electricity that is produced is a measure to see how happy bacteria are. So if we disturb the bacteria with nasty stuff, the electricity will be low, lower. So, what I did back in 2009 at the University of Newcastle in collaboration with Northumbria Water was to, to use this technology to develop a sensor for the biological oxygen um, uh, demand, um, BOD. Uh, so the BOD is currently a way to measure the strength of wastewater. Water company needs this type of information to understand how efficient was the um, secondary treatment of the wastewater. Uh, this is currently done with what is called the BOD5 test. It's a test that takes five days, as the name says, very expensive reagents, and is lab-based. So basically, if a wastewater treatment doesn't work, you know this five days afterwards. So it's really important to have something that works online and tells you immediately if there is something wrong in the treatment process. Um, this sort of uh, biofuels that are used is what we call an air cathode. So the uh, cathode phase is directly oxygen, so we don't need purging of oxygen, so extra cost. And which are the principle behind that? So basically, uh, the strength of the wastewater, so the amount of organic matter in the wastewater is the food for the bacteria in the device. So if we give less food, the bacteria will produce less energy. If you give them more food, the bacteria will produce more energy. So when I fed the system with wastewater containing different values of BOD, I had different values of output currents, which I can um, calibrate into um, a response. Of course, this is only within a certain range because if the amount of organic matter is very high, then you won't have any change anymore. We call it that this a saturating concentration of fuel for the device. But water companies are interested actually in this range because this is the range that uh, where they understand that there was something wrong in the wastewater treatment. Okay, so, and these are, yeah, more characteristic of uh, the sensor. The key, thing is that, the key thing is that it's a very simple one, so we don't need an external transducer to have a readable uh, signal, because the signal is the difference in the output current. So now, let's see how we can use this technology to detect pollutants in the water. 
The principle, as I said, is the same. So if there is anything that disturbs the bacteria, the results will be a difference in the current output. So, and we are in particular interested in the bioactivity of, the, of, um, of pollutants. So again, something that will interact with the bacterial cells. Which is the current way to measure the bioactivity of a pollutant? Is via um, complex organisms, uh, fishes or daphnia. Um, again, it requires long incubation times and reproducibility and sometimes the interpretation of the data is very difficult. Uh, we are interested, I'm, I'm working in collaboration with Vasex Water and uh, Southwest Water. They are interested mainly in this type of pollutants. As I said, mercocrop at the moment is the big issue. This is the, slug, the components of the slug killer. Right, um, again, I'm very interested in very simple um, uh, devices. So I printed this with a 3D printer. I saw over there uh, something similar. Um, this was a very quick um, uh, process and it's a layer by layer uh, 3D printing. I'm using extremely cheap um, electrode material, uh, carbon based because bacteria likes uh, to attach onto carbon surfaces and this is carbon cloth. Um, okay, so then I, I wanted to to prove my uh, hypothesis that I could use this as a way to test pollutants in water, and I used as a model components and uh, heavy metal, cadmium. Cadmium is a problem um, for industries that produce batteries, for example, so they uh, spill large amount of cadmium in water, and it has lots of consequences in the aquatic bio biota. Um, here you can see that um, the experiment I did was basically to, um, to use what I call an artificial wastewater. This is mainly a solution made of salts. And then I had that I, I mimicked the toxic event by adding cadmium for six minutes. So I injected cadmium in the system for six minutes. After that, I fed the system again with this artificial wastewater and no cadmium on it. So as you can see, I had an immediate response from the device, um, which is um, this drop in the current. And the drop in the current was proportional to the concentration, these numbers are the concentration of cadmium that I added. Of course, if the concentration is too high, like in this case, I completely killed the bacteria. So um, this sensor works in a, a specific range of concentration, which is anyway what we are interested in because we are interested in detecting uh, traces of pollutants. And if we plot the response in terms of the maximum current change after the toxic event, we can see that there is this linearity over this, um, over this change. Um, now, another interesting thing, yes, if the concentration is too high, we kill the bacteria, so uh, that's a problem. But in the other cases, after the toxic event, uh, event the current went back to the baseline, and the response was very fast, so um, around two minutes. Um, we are interested in pharmaceuticals as well. Um, there are numbers of pharm pharmaceuticals we are testing. I'm showing here only uh, one of the most recent um, um, uh, Result we had, so this is with paracetamol. We just started with paracetamol because we thought there's nothing bad in that, but actually we can detect uh, paracetamol as well. And now the question we are facing, and I'm not showing you all the other components, but um, uh, what we are doing so far is just to test single components. As I said, uh, this is not really what um, we are interested in because we want to understand the co-contamination effect. So we want to be able to, um, to see, uh, first of all, to distinguish water system will contain more than one component at once. So we want to be able to uh, distinguish between the several components and understand their um, uh, bioactivity. So um, 
so far we have shown that we can use this technology as a warning tool that gives us in real time uh, a feedback, tells us in real time there is something wrong, but this is not enough, so we want to know exactly what is wrong. So the direction we are moving towards is um, showing here in this graph and as you can see here there are different uh, pharmaceuticals and we uh, plotted here the signal ratio versus the anode potential so if we um, set the potential at the anode we can tune the, the specificity of uh, the device so the anode potential will influence the amount of electrons that are transferred to the anode and and this is the way we want to move forward to have a device that can tell us um, um, which type of different components are in the water. So as you see, there is an optimal anode potential. So uh, these peaks here represent the optimal anode potential at which uh, we can work the device. So if we have an array made of single uh, biofuel cells, each of them is working at the optimal anode potential of the specific compounds. We can have a real-time, simultaneous um, uh, mapping of different components in the water. Okay, um, that's all for today. Uh, I just wanted to give you an introduction of this technology. And I, I, can, um, I can tell you that this technology already works very well as a real-time warning tool um, for water quality. And um, what the direction we are moving now is to tune sensitivity and specificity via monitorization and by applying different anode potential to the system. The striking aspect of this technology is that it's very simple, it's really simple and, and very cost effective. So we use bacteria coming from uh, activated sludge. The type of, of materials that we use are really cheap. And um, it can work continuously and in feed, but as I said, we have uh, electricity production via the oxidation of the organic compounds in the water. So we could use this technology, to use, uh, this energy, to use, uh, develop a self-sustainable um, 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 device. And at the moment, we are um, working in collaboration with the charity uh, that operates in Africa because we really believe that this technology is very simple and can be easily applied to um, uh, developing countries. So I'd like to thank my colleagues, my students, the, work comp the water companies I'm working with or have been working in the past, the charity I just started to collaborate with, um, EPSSC for funding, and you all for your attention. Thank you. <laughs>